Hello everyone, Attack Power here with a interesting, different kind of video here I'm giving a try. And what we're going to be talking about here is how would I improve Steel Division 2? So if I was in charge completely and I could fix anything, what would I fix? So let's dive in here. A couple little disclaimers and all that good stuff as always. So first off, I'm not going to be going into like specific nerfs and buffs of units. I'm not doing that. That is a, that's a slippery rabbit hole. There's a strike team for that. And they honestly, they do do a good job of, of figuring these things out. Um, so I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, this unit is too much and this unit needs to get buffed. And this, no, 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 we're not getting into that crap. We're going, this is all like broad things broad things that 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 could be done that are going to generally improve the game completely in my opinion uh, so don't I don't need to hear this unit needs to be buffed no nah, no nah, 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 nah. we're not getting into that um, this again is just more general improvement of life things and all that kind of stuff some things will be wish list things that I know will never happen some things probably could happen but just don't um, you can see I am filming here trying to set up my, my new studio here in my new house so uh, Apologies for the no green screen stuff, but I don't know if I'll go back to the green screen. I haven't really decided. But anyway, if you guys enjoy this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content, and consider checking out that Patreon link down below. Thank you very much for all who have and are supporting me on there. It really does mean a lot. So let's dive in here. We're going to start at the top of my list here. I got my phone, so let's check this out because I don't want to miss anything big. So I'm going to start with more of the things I think are very, very doable. Uh, at least from from my perspective, I don't know how the game is program the programming works or anything like that. So I could be totally wrong. These could be impossible. I don't know. But let's start with one that just burns my soul. And we all know this: hill pressure or gun depression in this game. When specifically talking, of course, on hills, we've all seen this in many games. Um, what I what I would like to see is not gun depression to be taken out of the game. It is realistic, right? When a when a tank is on this hill right and it's trying to get up the crest of this hill it may not have the gun depression low enough that it can shoot on top of this hill that makes sense or when it's sitting on the hill looking this direction it may not be able to point its gun up high enough right because it's on this hill right, i gotta like get it right with the camera here it's on this hill right and maybe the gun can't point up high enough to like get it to be at a good angle right it might not be able to do that so i think gun depression is realistic and should exist in the game the problem is when the tank drives up the hill spots a target and then sits there and does freaking nothing is super annoying and to completely crap and it's not realistic because no tank would do that in all of time no idiot tanker would sit there like oh crap i can't shoot him well i guess i'll shoot i'll just sit here and die like that's stupid that's not realistic so what should happen is the tank should keep driving until it gets to a position that it could fire like it's an attack move so it should keep moving until it can actually attack feels like they could it feels like they could do that i'll be honest with you it feels like that can happen um again i could be wrong but it feels like it could be something they could do so yeah that's the big that's number one and one i really think could be fixed and let me be clear if you're if you're like a new person watching this video steel division 2 is a phenomenal game i adore this freaking game i have over 750 videos of this game and this game alone and i love every moment of it and if they change nothing, I'll keep playing it. It doesn't make a difference. But these are things, if I could change, I do think would make a dramatic improvement to the game. Now, the next thing I'd love to see in the settings menu is an ability to automatically turn off APCR or heat. Um, so, like, in other words, your units would come in with APCR or heat shells, depending on what you want, automatically turned off, and you would turn them on. Um, I think that would be super helpful in a lot of situations. Now, I, I'm speaking m almost mostly to APCR. Um, heat, a lot of times, I think just should be on, because a lot of units have, like, think like a, an infantry gun, IG-18 or something. You know, I want the heat to be on automatically. You know, I don't want to have to turn that on. But, you know, like, I'm thinking, like, a Tehran has a heat, AP, and HE. You know, a lot of times, I want one of those things to fire automatically. Now, going down that rabbit hole a little more, what I think would just be better altogether is is if the game would automatically fire whatever type of round penetrated best at that range. So in other words, I don't need to turn on an APCR. I don't need to turn it off. The game is just going to choose whichever one actually has a better uh, penetration value at whatever range. It's going to automatically fire that one. It's not going to stupid pick stupid crap. Um, again, I'm thinking Tehran firing AP shells at 55 millimeters of penetration when it has a heat shell at 90 millimeters of penetration why the f is it doing that um pack 40 at 1500 meter range firing an apcr shell that maybe pens like 130 at that range when the ap shell might actually still pen 
135 or, or something like that. Um, or, or a setting where I could set the actual like penetration value I want an APCR shell to be. So like I only want it to fire if it can penetrate at 75% of its value or 80% of its, I don't know. There's like, a, there's like 15 different ways to set this that it's not me having to sit there and manually click every single unit to turn off the APCR. Again, my first suggestion would probably be the most straight cut. Like have an option that I click in the settings that says APCR automatically off when it comes in and I turn it on when I want it to be on. Uh, I just, because APCR is a special round, you don't get many of them. I just don't think it should be something that's automatically on and just, just, they just waste the rounds all the time on stupid crap. That's not, doesn't need it. Like I freaking hate when an AT gun is firing an APC round at a truck. Why, that, why is it doing that? That's stupid. Like it just shouldn't, it just shouldn't be that way. It just, it should be automatically off. And then like, oh crap, a tank that I can't pen with my AP round. I'm going to turn on APCR. Boom, there you go. But instead, APCR is on all the time, and it's constantly being wasted on stupid units that don't need to be hit with APCR. So, like, to me, at least, again, it could be an option. Maybe people like APCR being on all the time. That's fine. Cool. All right, you're, you're a fan of that? Go for it. Why am I forced to suffer having to hit APCR off all the time and lose units and crap because APCR is auto on like that's just stupid like that's I that one I definitely think they could put in I think that's an easy fix that would make life a lot more better a lot more efficient for everybody now my next thing is the line of sight tool can it not be any cleaner than this can it not be any cleaner like like legit it, 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 it can only be this square grainy thing that only is sort of accurate sometimes like we seriously can't make this be like like nice and smooth i mean if i zoom into this this unit right here those lines are nice and smooth huh those leaves are round yeah yeah th this this dirt is curvy let's look at this water right here look at it look look at it. it it looks beautiful it's ripply it's very watery there's reflections in the freaking water and you're telling me all that beautiful visual and this is what i get for the line of sight tool Really? But for real? We we can't we can't be we can't make this a little bit cleaner. Just a bit. I mean we've seen the Warno site tool, that one's really nice. That's gorgeous. I'm just I'm just saying. You know, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure and again I haven't played Warno in a while. I need to get back to it. But I'm pretty sure in Warno they literally have like like different shadings of the LOS tool that like allows you to see how well you would see units in certain that would be great well why why can't I why can't I know that my recon unit can see all the way out to 2,000 meters with super clarity but my infantry units only seeing out well to 1500 meters like why why is why am I not allowed to have that information oh on that point too on the line of sight tool why is it 120 why isn't it 150 why can't I have a 120 a 150 and a 250 what about 250 there's a lot of AT guns, <coughs> Pandasrex and Bazookas, that fire at 250 meters. Why can't I set this to what I want? Why can't I choose I want 120, 150, 250, and 500, and the rest, whatever, fine, I'll keep the rest. Or 750. Why not 750? The LMGs of the game fire at 750. That is literally hundreds of units. You need to know what 750 meters is. Now, I understand that's becoming a lot of lines. I, I do get that. So why can't I choose? Why can't I have the option? Maybe I don't want 120. Maybe I want 150 instead. You know, like, like, I mean, Panzerfaust at 120. But that's it. That's like the only thing in the game that's at 120. So why is 120 the number they chose? Was it because back in the day that was literally the only thing? Like there was no 150 when the game first came out? Like no unit fired at 150 meter range? Well, there was no Swomies. There was no Berettas. So technically... But, but why 120? Why not 100? So like 100, so you knew when the submachine gun fires. Like it, I don't know. It, 120 feels like such a weird number to pick, of all the numbers in this game. The Panzerfaust is the thing that determined the range circle. Ah, it seems really weird to me. I why can't I set it? Why can't I choose 100, 150, 250, 500? You know, whatever I want. Well, why, why am I forced to deal with this? I don't know. There's many, many times I'm sitting there thinking my, my Panther Shrek's going to shoot at something, walks up, and it apparently is not actually a two. And the thing is, you can't, it's hard to, yes, I know I can click on the unit, and I can, like, 
like mouse over it to see. But like, come on, I'm in the middle of microing 50 units. I do not have time to click and go, oh crap, I'm 350. Like, I don't know. And also, like, if I'm here and I click on the unit, I'm, it's showing here and it starts to drive up. I, I can't see it without sitting here and watching it slowly drive up. That's not, I, no, like that's stupid. I should be able to have a ring right here that says 250 lined up right there, right there, right around there. I have no idea what 250 actually is because again, I don't have it. So like I have to guess, that's just dumb. Why can't I choose? Like, why can't I set it? That would be super helpful. That'd be really cool. I would love that. We should do that. Let's get Eugen to do that. Okay. Next thing, and this, again, I know I said I'm not doing burfs and, and nerfs and burfs and nuffs. <laughs> anyway, buffs and nerfs. But this one is so broad that I, I think it can be included. I think tanks should either get a buff in HE damage or HE suppression. One of the two. Um, not both. That would be too much. But one of the two. Uh, me, prefer, me personally... I think I lean towards the damage and not a huge buff. Like the standard is, I think like 1.52 is pretty common uh, damage. Why not two? Because quite frankly, if you're getting hit by a 75 millimeter shell, I feel like two guys might die. Especially when the infantry are clumped up. You know, wait, wait I need an infantry squad out in the open. This is, I must be playing poorly somewhere. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. Look how close they are. You're telling me a 75 meter shell hits right here and these two guys don't die? Really? Well, that is fine. If that's not fine, we don't like that, cool. Then, I mean, look at this, look at this squad right here. You boom, like really? Okay, fine. But suppression, if a 75 meter shell, millimeter shell hits right next to me, my butt's hitting the ground. I'm telling you right now, I'm not gonna stand there and be like, ho oh, ho, you missed me. You're an idiot. You can't shoot me. Like, come on, really? Really? Yeah, I, I think, I think that would put Panzer divisions and tank divisions and, you know, all those Soviet tank divisions, all of those back on the map. I really think that would be super duper helpful. Now, it's a balancing act. I'm not saying go nuts. We don't need a medium tank spam meta once again. Um, we, with that, we don't need that. But, again, a, a slight buff to one of those two factors, probably suppression, like if we don't want to get out of hand. Um, maybe suppression, I, I think would do a, go a long way in helping make tank divisions great again. Uh, that would be the only like buff nerf I'm really like advocating for. Uh, there's of course all kinds of units in the game and stuff that could be, you know, general things. There's going to be one more on this list, uh, but that's getting into my not going to happen list. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, I think a buff to tank main gun suppression probably would be a nice spot to balance the infantry meta out a little bit and make it more viable to use tanks and more efficiently okay now um th the last one of the ones i think could really happen is a nerf to the fallback mechanic now i it shouldn't be huge because this is a core mechanic of the game i do not think it should go to like so like right now i think it's 75 or 80 percent damage reduction I, I can't remember the number it's one of those two things tell me in the comments it's fine um so that, that's a lot like, when, when these troops are getting hit by, like, a 250-kilogram bomb out of a plane, like this Focke Wolf up here, okay, if you're already falling back, the, the bomb does almost no damage. It, it's kind of nuts, actually. It does, like, it kills, like, one or two units. That's pretty, that's, that's, that's pretty insane, to be honest with you. Um, I, I don't think it should be that extreme. Um... Yeah, I get the concept. You know, the guy's falling back. He's running really fast, so you know the bullets miss or, or whatever. Fine. And I don't, I don't want it to be like all the way down to like only a fifty percent damage reduction. It, it would make falling back almost not useful. But maybe back it up to sixty-five percent, seventy percent, sixty, somewhere in there. Damage reduction. Um, I think everything else is fine. The, the troops should run faster. Like, you, if you don't know when you fall back, the unit moves faster. Like, literally moves faster. But and that should stay because you're running away. So like, no duh, you you move faster. But the whole the damage reduction to the point where like the unit doesn't take damage is a little much. It, it's at least a little bit much. Uh, I could definitely see it being fair to, you know, cut it back five, ten, fifteen ish percent, um, just so that you actually have a better chance of killing units that are falling back. Right now, it's like they're once they fall back, they're almost indestructible. It's it's kind of it's a little much. Like unless you're throwing a crap ton of firepower at them they're generally walking away so i think a little nerf to the fallback mechanic would be 
it would be refreshing. It would definitely shake up the gameplay a lot. Uh, it would definitely feel a lot different, and you'd have to actually think through falling back a little bit more, because right now it's just your unit spin fall back. Yeah, I mean, it probably still would be that, but it'd be a lot less automatic. Like, there might be more situations where you're like, maybe I don't want to fall back here because I'll still die. You know, it's one of those sort of things. So, yeah, definitely a nerf to the fallback. Now, into things that probably aren't going to happen. Would love it. Probably aren't going to happen. And the one I know you're all probably yelling at me into the screen, remaking some of the old maps. And not remaking them, but moving the GD flags. Fix that flipping flags. Now I get, I understand the problem. I, I, I've, I've heard it many times and, and I support, I do, I get that there's two forces going here. We have the player community who of course would love to see some of these garbage A maps like Siano and um, Ilomansi and um, uh, Slutz West where the, the flag layout is so obnoxiously unfair that it make, it ruins the game on those maps. Like, it's just not fun when you're on the crap side of those maps. It just isn't. It's not that you can't win. It's just so much more challenging. We all want that. We want those to get better. And on the flip side, Eugen apparently has used whatever map development tool for this game that is so convoluted and time-consuming that for them, doing that means completely remaking the map. Like, it's not like we all just think, oh, they'll just grab the flag and move it over. Apparently, that's not how it works, and they have to literally build the map from the ground up, and they have to, like, program the AI to specifically do things on every single map. And that's why the AI is not a complete idiot all the time. Like, yeah, no, the, the AI is not, like, mega smart. But the truth is, when you think about the complexity of this game, the AI is incredible. Like, when you really think about it, the AI is absolutely excellent in this game when you consider the amount of micro and things going on and if you think of a, a micro if you think of like the ai in a game like company of heroes where there's like six units on the map and all the ai has to do is keep pumping units out because that's what it had like and most of the units serve a very similar purpose um you know that's yeah i mean there's still a lot of ai going on but it's not the same level as this where there are hundreds of different units all serving different purposes in very specific situations the ai is incredible it really is i mean again it's stupid but it's an ai like we're not there at that point yet you know until chat gpt takes over our video games um so like they have to program every single map individually for the ai to work on it so it takes a very long time for them to change maps so the last thing they want to do is spend time remaking old maps that are technically fine they're fine they work people play on them so they're fine but they suck some of them suck really bad and i love mo i basically I, I honestly love most of them from a terrain standpoint i find the terrain on most maps really quite fun and yes it's an asymmetrical game it's supposed to not be exactly even but i think the flags could be like do they have to be at like a crossroad or something like, do they really? The answer is no, they don't. Um, they, they, they just don't. Put them somewhere else. Like, why does it have to be here? Why don't you just put it over here instead or put it back here? Why, why does it have to be here? Why don't you just put it here? Or, you know, why does it have to be on this crossroad? Put it over here. Who cares that it's not on, like, a important point? Like, who gives a rip? Okay, like make it so it's fair. Like don't make it so like half the blue flags are back here and none of the red flags are back. Like even if you look at this map right now, okay, we have one, two, three blue flags deep, like deep. These are way back there. You're probably not getting at them unless the opponent, unless there's a huge difference in skill, game has gone terribly, so on and so forth. If we look at the red side here, there's one, two. This one is much more capturable. It's not anywhere near as close to the edge as all of these are. We can see all of these are within 1,500 meters of the back line here. If we look at these, this one is nowhere close to 1,500 meters, and that's it. All the others are really far forward. And I'm not saying red is worse on this map. I'm just stating, like, if we look at it here, why? Why? Why can't we make them even? That's just me. That's just me. So that's that's one. That's, it's not happening. Okay, I've already accepted that, and it's, it makes me extremely sad. Two, more maps. Now, we are getting this, uh, but we don't know what kind of maps. We have no idea. And the new map thing falls into the same issue as the remaking of the maps, although new maps are more likely, as we see, we're getting two new maps, because they're just starting from the ground up. So they're at least making, for them, from their perspective, they're actually adding new content, right? Remaking maps is not adding new content. It's just remaking things. 
this actually adds new content. The other other argument is that the maps apparently take up the most room in the game. And I always keep saying apparently because I don't actually know what's true or not true. I don't know what Eugen says to us just to cover their butts. I, I don't know. Okay, and I'm not saying Eugen is lying. That is not what I'm trying to imply here. I'm just trying to say this is what I hear, not stating it as, like, gold hard fact. Um, but yeah, new maps, of course we'd all love more. Right? That would be great. I, I would love new maps. That would make the game better. Um... There's not much to say on that one. We've all said it. We all know. Every time I release a new DLC video, like that is a preview or something, people are like, we want new maps. <laughs> like, I know, guys. I know. I know. We all feel the same way about it. Yeah, I love new divisions, but would I love, would I love five new maps more? <laughs> yes. Yes, I really would. But again, apparently it takes a lot more manpower to do it. And guys, it's a business. We have to remember at the end of the day, Eugen Studios has to survive. If it dies, this game dies too. So, you know, for me, I'm like, all right, if I'm not going to get a new map so Eugen can keep running as a company, fine. Take my money. I'll get over it. But again, would I love to see more new maps? Yes. Obviously. Obviously, that'd be great. Um, another thing that I'd love to see in the queue is some sort of ban system for maps or divisions. I don't really care. Um, you know, just like three maps I don't want to play on. Okay? Lunina, Ilomansi, Siano. Boom. <laughs> there they are. Okay, I don't want to play those. Or maybe on that particular day, I don't want to play Slits West. Or maybe on that particular day, I don't feel like playing Cell. Maybe on that particular day, I don't feel like playing whatever that map. I can't remember. I keep forgetting the name of it. I just played it on. It's not a Warba. It's the other. Oh, Strono. Thank you. Okay. It, maybe I don't want to. Why can't I put three bands so the game just doesn't put me in those? And then when it matches me up with another player with his three bands, then we pick one of the other six maps. Because again, I know we complain about the maps. There are a fairly large number of maps. Like, it's not like there's none. There's a pretty good number. And any overlap then, of course, means there's more, right? Even if I ban... Lenina, Siano, oh, Gora, I forgot about stupid Gora. Lenina, Siano, Gora, uh, Slits West, Ilomansi, and what else don't I feel like playing today? Ostrono. Those six are banned. There's still like seven or eight other maps. So can't we have that, please? 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 I, honestly, that one feels doable to me. I, I put that in the not happening category. I feel like it could happen. I'm not going to lie. I feel like that one could happen. I really do. Division banning would be nice, but it doesn't actually work because if you're going to the quick pool with a random division, all you're doing is knocking down the number of people you could play. So let's say 20 people are in the queue. 10 of them are playing fourth false me again, and you don't want to play for fun. You ban that. So now none of those people can be matched up against you. And now it's just like 10 people sitting around not doing it. So that, that, that it just ain't going to work. Um, yes. Is it possible if we could have some sort of, um, some sort of uh, like banning system once two people are queued up. Yeah, that'd be interesting, but it does add time to the game and the game already does take long, right? I mean, it's a lot longer than the average, you know, it's a lot longer than the average video game if we're, if we're being honest with ourselves. So like, do I think that one's going to happen? No, I, I don't. But the map banning thing, I definitely think that's super reasonable. And I think people would love playing in the queue a whole lot more if you weren't first to be stuck on stupid Lenina for an hour. It's miserable. It's horrible. It's ho Nobody wants that. Just put in some bands that just automatically block those. And boom, there you have it. We've done it. I've solved the map problem. Look at me go. And the last one, and this one's a big one, and, and, and I don't even know how much I... I don't even know which way I would go with this, but I'm just putting it in here because I think it needs to be stated. I would consider... And I'm not strongly feeling about this, but I would consider nerfing nearly every single division that was released in the last year. I would consider doing that. Nerfing. Not buffing old divisions up to the new divisions. Mm -mm. Nerf new divisions, all of them back down to everybody else. Now, of course, that's not every single division. There have been plenty of divisions released that are not absolutely OP. Um, just a couple. NOV, for example. Unternehmen. Uh, Fourth Alpine. Um, Brony Rana. That just came out. Uh, 17th Divisiona. You know, just, I mean, maybe those don't need a big nerf. But I would say a solid 75% of the new divisions released in this recent year should be nerfed. Just nerf them all. I, I probably would really help, to be honest with you. Option two, buff all the old divisions. Every division that is two or more years old, buff them up. Make them better. 
I don't know how. Again, this is a massive undertaking. I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going into specifics here. And I, I believe the strike team is already working on things of this nature, but, um, you know, just, just blanket buff. Blanket buff everything that's like two years old plus. Maybe even, even, even less than that. More, a year old. <laughs> older than a year. Older than a year and a half, somewhere in that zone. Um, you know, of course, varied depending on the division we're talking about here, right? Um, but yeah, um, I, yeah, the game has power creeped. It has, and I've, I, I've kept not wanting that to be the case, but it is. It is the case, especially with the recent Men of Steel division, the Men of Steel DLC, and that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, with this upcoming DLC tribute to Normandy and stuff, uh, it looks like the Allied divisions are just going to be absurd. I mean. I, I can't see them not being disgusting. Um, will the Axis divisions be disgusting? Probably. I'm not saying they won't be, but uh, certainly on paper, at least, the Allied divisions look extremely strong. Um, but that's not even uh, that's not even specifically for that DLC. You know, there's already plenty of problems we got going on, and again, they're working on them. I'm not taking that from the Strike team. They do a lot of work, and I thank them and appreciate them. Um, and I do appreciate that Eugen looks at his game. Remember, guys, it, this game is old. Can, all things considered, this game is getting old, and yet they continue to balance and change and make changes to try to keep the game good and fresh and fun. So, I, I again, I know this sounds like a big complaint video, but it really isn't. It's just, if Eugen ever watched me, or gave a rip about what I say at all, these are the things I think would make a massive improvement to the game overall. Um, specifically, again, those front ones, those, 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 the beginning of the video here, these ones at the end are just like wish listy things. I mean, yeah, I'd love if you fix the maps. It's not going to happen. I know that. Um, I know it's not financially savvy to do that, but would I love to see it? Yes. But again, there's, there's all those other things I think would be super helpful. Um, fix the hill pression thing, give me some sort of setting for APCR to have it come on in automatically off. Um, automatically fire the most effective penetrating ammo, uh, clean up the LOS tool, the line of sight tool. That'd be super helpful. Allow me to choose ranges for the lines. That would be super great. If I could choose the ranges for the lines, um, some sort of buff to tanks in the HE department in some way, maybe nerf fall back a little bit and give me some sort of band system in the map, in the quick pew Q in the rank, both Q, Q and ranked, both of them. Give me some sort of ban. I pick a couple of divisions, a uh, couple of maps that I do not want to play on, and let me ban those. That would be fantastic. Also, a lot of you asked for my game against Le uh, Luna, where he absolutely took his foot and shoved it up my butt really far. Um, there you go. <laughs> that was it in the background. But if you guys enjoyed this little rant session, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider checking out that Patreon down below. And remember, Steel Division 2 is incredible. I love this game but I'd love to see it get even better. Thanks a bunch, guys, and have a fantastic day.